Welcome to the Hands and Feet of Jesus show. Uh, guys, we got a real special guest with us. we got my sister in Christ, Amy Sutherland. Amy, thank you so much for being on my show. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm yeah. just blessed to be here. So you've been kind of shaking and baking, you know, you're all about, you know, I know that you act, you, you, you know, you write, you speak, um, and I'm just really kind of maybe geeking out a little bit to sit here with you, but I'm excited about it too. So we were just on The Christian View, mm -hmm. right? And you've been, uh, you've been a host on there. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that came about? How did you get called to be on The Christian View? Sure. Um, actually, I, I just received, I think it was a, a Facebook Messenger message from Trudy that just said, would, I would like to talk to you about you know coming on The Christian View. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting because at the beginning of last year, um, actually even starting a couple years ago, the Lord started asking me to do live videos and I was doing my own hosting. Mm -hmm. um, and He kept telling me He was going to you know, increase uh, my territory. Mm -hmm. But uh, so when Trudy asked me, I was actually very honored. And mm -hmm. so it just started very organically. Yeah, that's good, that's good. And so how long has that been running now? that you've been hosting on there with her? Oh, um, let's see. My first episode was August of 2020. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And how has that impacted like your life and those who are in your circle of influence? Well, um, I do, of course, you know, have friends that I've begun to watch and, um, you know, just sharing with <laughs> my area of influence. But I would say, you know, I just think um, what, Trudy do, what Trudy is doing is amazing mm -hmm. and how she's reaching so many people yeah. and just talking about the things that are on, um, you know, our hearts, but also the Lord's heart and just yeah. sharing His heart in the matter. But, yeah. you know, for me, really, what I love about it is in my study and the time that I take to really dive into the questions and the episode topics, mm -hmm. you know, I'm always learning myself mm -hmm. and that's what I really love and just always learning how to be a yielded vessel and say, yes. Lord, just speak your words today through, yeah. through me. And that's yeah. really all I want, you know, yeah. it's just his heart to be manifested. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, it comes off maybe a little bit more fiery and sometimes, you know, <laughs> a little bit different. But, you know, the Lord, he has a lot of different um, personalities, if you will, you yeah. know, has a different, a lot of characteristics and attributes. Yes, and so sometimes his word does come forth like fire. Yeah. And other times, you yeah. know, it's... Um, yeah, and can't that be a little scary sometimes when the Lord, like, just use you how he wants you? Uh -huh. And it's like new territory <laughs> and it's like, okay, Lord, you want me to do that? You know, so I'm, I've been blessed to be on there as well. And, and really shout out to Trudy Simmons for what you what you've done thank you for having us on because she's she's really impacted my life greatly and the show has but you mentioned that the the people that you've had shared the show with and they've seen it too mm -hmm. it's it's impactful that other people who we know personally maybe even some that are non-believers that are able to see this because you know sometimes it takes for someone to see you on a show to say okay i'm gonna check it out because mm -hmm. you're on it but the impact that it could have beyond that is how they're blessed so we're going to get into a little bit about how you said you spend time with the Lord and how the Lord speaks to you. We want to talk about that in terms of your ministry. But we also know you as an actress, mm -hmm. right? So how long have you been acting now? Uh, professionally? Um, so I started off like auditioning when I was a little girl and wanting to know, like, how do I audition right for this, you know, role when I was in elementary school? And I was so embarrassed. I just, I, I dealt with a lot of embarrassment, um, kind of personal shame, if you will, sure. and just not really knowing how to hold myself in that yeah. type of setting. Sure. Although I loved it, I just got really embarrassed when I was around people. Mm -hmm. um, and so within that, it was like I had that desire, but the Lord had to heal me. And the more mm -hmm. healing I had, mm -hmm. the more I was able to actually walk in that. So by the time I got to high school, I started acting more, went to Bible college, and there I became a student director of fine arts. Mm -hmm. I was accepted to the American Academy of Dramatic Dramatic Arts twice, wow. Um, wow. which is a very um, notoriable school for, mm -hmm. you know, theater and, yeah. and acting academy, Robert Redford, you know, okay. Cecil B. DeMille. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said no. And so I went on this interesting journey, missions, um, graduated from Bible college with mm -hmm. pastoral and missions emphasis. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, pastoral was my third. Um, my number one was counseling. Mm -hmm. I graduated from Bible college, went on and to do a lot of like missions work and then just like acting in, uh, had an agent, but just on a small scale. Sure. But it wasn't until I went to Africa in 2010 mm -hmm. um, to minister with Heidi Baker and, and her school that the Lord kind of really synced things for me. He said, mm -hmm. when you, right before you come back, um, or he said to me, when I was leaving, when you come back, 
you'll be doing more acting. And I was like, okay. But once I was in Africa, I just thought, Lord, I just, you know, I just want to yield to you. I want to do the spiritual thing. Like, I think I'm supposed to be this missionary, you know, yeah. here. Yeah. And I just wanted to do what would please his heart. And he said, Amy, you'll actually reach more people if you'll, if you'll come back and you'll give yourself as a missionary to the entertainment industry. Now, what's interesting and why this is such a long story is actually when I was eight years old, when I was watching the mission, mm -hmm. um, the Lord has always used media to bring me into my call. So when I was watching that film, I, I had that heart um, to become a, a missionary. It was one of the defining moments for me. Now the film is called The Mission? Mm -hmm, with Robert De Niro. Okay, so all of us out, out there, the film is called Mission, The Mission with Robert De Niro. Yeah, back in the day. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm not going to age myself. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then also the same again when mm -hmm. I went to Africa. I had been praying mm -hmm. um, to the Lord to bring me back to Africa because I had already been. And it was through the film The Finger of God that Darren mm -hmm. Wilson mm -hmm. documented. Yeah, yeah. And when I, I saw that and I saw Heidi Baker, I was like, that's it. You know, and the original language of the Lord is pictures. The original Hebrew language mm -hmm. before it was letters was pictures. Oh, that's good. And that's what a movie is. A movie is moving yeah. pictures. Yeah, sure. And so the that's Lord good. often speaks through media, which is why it's really um, important that we have righteous people rising up in that's the good. industry. That's good. So you say that righteous people rising up. So have you always been in faith-based film? Or did, did you start your journey on the opposite side in Hollywood and kind of mosey on your way? How did that chasm, how did you bridge that? that yeah, there? definitely. No, I mean, I had Christians who did film in the yeah. industry. Okay. But when I was starting off, like mm -hmm. Christian film was nothing to write home about. Yeah. No offense. Yeah, right, It right. was okay. really, um, right. You know, it's it just yeah. not high quality <laughs> right. and things that you don't always want to associate your name with. Yeah, and yeah. just because no, of the, the types of acting or how it was done? I would say quality. Okay. Yeah, and type of acting. Sure. You know, people just think you can memorize lines and, and there's a whole technical side. There's a yeah. craft. There's yeah. an yeah. art. Yeah. You know, and the Bible says to do everything as unto the Lord. That's right. So it's really important to have a spirit of excellence in sure. what we're doing. We need to sure. be Daniels. Sure. You know, right. whatever field you're in, to be to literally be Daniels and, yeah. and be excellent in and, that. And because you're you you know the Word of God and you know how He speaks to you, to the viewers and those who are watching, what does that reference to say to be a Daniel, to someone who might not know what you're talking about? Sure. Well, Daniel in the Bible, <laughs> um, he was set apart, and um, he actually. Uh, had an opportunity to deny the Lord, um, but he chose not to. Mm. And he was rescued even from um, the lion's den, mm -hmm. you know, where he was thrown into the lion's den because he wouldn't obey the laws and the regulations of that time. And so um, he he ate differently, he looked differently, he yeah. he was just as strong in his um, might and might yeah. and in stature yeah. as the other men who were eating a different diet. And sure. he said right. he said, look, let let me just give you this opportunity. Let me just see how this goes. That's right. yeah. And he he pitched mm -hmm. them basically yeah, this idea, yeah. Yeah. like, look, let me have my diet. Yeah. Let me do things yeah. my way happens. into yeah. my God, and, and we'll see. Yeah. And the Lord proved him um, yeah. strong. And so. Yeah. Anyway, um, all that Daniel did was with the spirit of excellence. He was also prophetic. He was also, um, you know, he helped interpret dreams. Yeah. He was sought out for yeah. his his craftsmanship yeah. Yeah. and his skilled knowledge. Yeah. And so, you know, when I, I hear what I'm hearing right now is how skilled he was at, you know, being, at, at operating with perfection. He, not only did he operate in perfection, but he also, because of his state of obedience to interpret the king's dream, he saved many lives, mm -hmm. right, as a result, because right. they were going to kill him. Right. Right. King Nebuchadnezzar was going to off them all. Mm -hmm. Right. But yet he says, no, let me uh, let me consult my God. Right. And then let me let me let me get back to you. And he got back to him and he interpreted his dream. But that moment reminds me of how many more Christians can operate in the state of obedience by hearing that from God to say, you know what, I'm not going to move just yet. I'm going to consult my God and I'm going to see what he comes up with. Right. And then I'm going to speak. So is that what happened with you as far as, you know, leaving Hollywood and then entering Faith Based Film? Or? Oh, sorry. Yeah, back to that. Um, so my journey has been a little bit all over the map. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, I believe a true missionary is sent to people who don't know um, the, the Lord. And so mm -hmm. I, I've been very much involved in the secular world. I received a lot of my training that way. Mm -hmm. But I always had high standards. I, my mm -hmm. very first agent, 
you know, he wouldn't even send me on certain auditions because he just knew, he knew me. Mm. And so there, there was just questions he just didn't even have to answer because mm. he knew who I was. Mm. And having that type of relationship, I was very fortunate, or I should say, had a lot of favor there. Mm -hmm. However, um, yes, I left LA, I would, it's, I'm going on almost five years in Georgia now. Mm. And when I moved here, I had no idea that I was getting into the faith-based industry. I did Thy Neighbor, which is a, my faith, my first faith-based yeah. feature is that right? when yeah. I was still in L.A. Yeah, okay. But then I moved out here and I yeah. started working with some other people, yeah. what yeah. just seemed to be a broader circle. Yeah. And that's when I started um, just getting involved more in the film circuit, yeah. um, the film festivals, yeah, sure. winning awards. Sure, and sure, sure. Yeah, like and that. I saw you in that and, and, it, and it spoke to me. Just to, just to see you, you act, you know, I learned, you know, me as an actor myself, I learn from other actors and actresses sure. on how they do on film. And I think that's just very similar to that when we read the word, mm -hmm. right? We're learning Christ's character by reading the words on the pages. And also when we see different films that are depicted of Christ and Christ's character, I've learned that way. So I just want to compliment you on a job well done on screen because this is all new to me. You know, mm -hmm. I've only come to know you recently, yeah. but what I've seen is a woman who's after God's own heart, you know? So now that we're speaking about that, your heart, how did that, how did the whole acting and you just falling in love with the Lord lead to um, you being used as a prophetic voice in prophetic writing? Well, um, I believe that most people who are in the media mm -hmm. have some type of prophetic call. Mm. Because the media, um, the anointing on media doesn't expire. The anointing on anything really doesn't expire. It doesn't have an expiration date. That's good. And I was sharing that recently. But the thing is, is that many have said it recently. You can think it's controversial or not, but the, our media right now in America mm -hmm. is a voice of the modern day, basically false prophets of Baal. Mm. And they're, they're mm. throwing and spewing out lies. When you say our, our media, are we referring to uh, media as a whole, secular media? What are we talking about? As I'm far? talking about media as a whole, but media. particularly secular media. Okay, that's right. Yeah. You know, yep. CBN. That's right. Or excuse me. Not yeah, CBN. Yeah, no, <laughs> we rebuke that in <laughs> Jesus' name. <laughs> so even CBN, we love you. We love you. <laughs> CBS. That's right. Yeah. That's what happens yes. when you have acronyms. Yeah. yeah, that's right. ABC. Yeah, ABC, CBS, NBC, CBN, CBN. Now, the funniest part of me being an actress, anyway, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. I actually don't watch a lot of film. Yeah. I don't watch a lot of television. Yeah. I really don't yeah. watch the news. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, unless I have a reason to watch it, I don't. Yeah. But you're saying that they're the modern-day, what, bail, that are modern-day false prophets? Right. Yeah. yeah so they're they spewing are. just false information in terms of really what God is saying, what he wants his people to know. Well, and what happens is, is media steers us in, oh. a, in a direction. Sure. So in that sense, it is quote unquote prophecy <laughs> and the fact that it's trying to foretell something and getting people's hearts steered in a direction yeah. that they follow. Yeah, that's and I don't, I don't need to go into all these sure not, uh, no. facts. Mm -hmm. However, you know, it's, it's, ver it's true that in the, starting in the 50s and the 1960s, they mm -hmm. you know, putting information out on our televisions mm -hmm. And even through advertising, we yeah. see it, what does that do? And that causes us to want to go out and, and buy something. And then, you know, they find it. Let's say, let's just take cigarettes, for example. Sure, yeah. You know, yeah. look, at, look at what they find out yeah. through cigarettes. That That's through right. the Surgeon's General, yeah. uh, look, this causes lung cancer. Yeah. But because everyone was doing it in a yeah. photo in the 1960s right. on right. Mad Men, which yeah. was on That's Mad right. Men, That's which, right. which That's was right. really cool. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, that note, is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, so mm -hmm. those are just little things, mm -hmm. but back to the media and the media call, I do believe that most people do have that inclination to um, to hear the Lord and hear His heart, as mm -hmm. as because the Bible says that I desire that all should prophesy. Sure. So it's not necessarily that everyone who's in media is a prophet. Yeah. But. It's that anointing because sure. it's it's going on and on. Think we watch movies from mm -hmm. the twenties, from mm -hmm. the thirties, from mm -hmm. the fifties. Music, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that and what we do. It's actually scientific that it has DNA, it has sure. atoms in it, sure. and they're ever living. Sure. Which is why the Bible says sure. that the power of life and death 
is in the tongue. tongue. Mm -hmm. And which mm -hmm. is why it's even more important what projects we're choosing to do and right. whether it has a redemption right. meeting. You know, a lot of people don't realize that television is tell a vision. It's telling a vision. Mm -hmm. It's telling something. What's a vision? A vision is something that either you first see or you foresee, mm -hmm. right? And then, like you're saying, like, you know, the, the media, secular media in particular, is telling a vision. But what is it that they want people to see, right? You want people to see what's evil, what's wrong, right? But it's not to correct what's wrong in the world, it's to perpetuate it. Mm -hmm. It's so that it can continue. And then I believe as a body of Christ, we have a huge responsibility being in faith-based media to now tell the vision of what the Messiah says. Do right. you agree? Oh yeah, no, it's great. I, I love the way that you put that. Um, because definitely, I mean, part of my gifting is I do see visions, I do see pictures, I, I'm a dreamer, but I've been <coughs> that way um, to answer your original question mm -hmm. since I was a little girl. That's good. So I came out of the womb, um, yeah. kind of hearing, if you will. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm what some people would call, and I hate titles, but yeah. like a like a womb prophet, like a okay. Jeremiah prophet. I yeah. before you know you were in the womb, I That's knew good. you. That's good. And so um, for me, when I came out, like. I saw in the spirit since I was a young girl. Yeah. So I've been seeing yeah. entities, demons, and you know, spirits and, and, since and, I was and a And if young I child. make, because you said something that, like, you know, you kind of don't want to say, but you're a womb prophet, take it from me that I've been watching you. You are that. Okay? And I've seen it. Now, I'm a man that I didn't always walk with Jesus. You know, my viewers know that. I didn't always walk with Christ. You know, I came to Christ in 2017. Mm. But he radically transformed my life, like he did Saul on the way to Damascus. Mm. And when Christ meets you, when the Messiah meets you, and it's not like something that you were a pastor's kid or whatever have you, and then you came to know Jesus like years later after rejecting him. No, he met me, the Messiah. And when that happens, something very special happens. So perhaps that happened with you in the womb. Mm. And he put his hand upon you, because I've been watching you, I've been seeing what you've been posting, and the things that you say are so on point right from where we're at now, right? So to the people who are out there who might not even know what we're talking about, can you make it make sense for them on what it is that we're speaking in reference to? Sure. On how, how is it that, you know, how it was as a kid and what led you to take that responsibility to say, I need to do something about this. He gave me a gift and I got to use it. Sure. Well, you know, wh what we're talking about in broad is hearing the voice of the Lord. Amen. Hearing God's voice. And in the Bible, in, in Samuel, it said, you know, he kept hearing, thinking that, um, who was his predecessor? S Samuel. Oh. Um, I can't think of it right Yeah, now. I can't I think of it. But Samuel. Um, Eli. Eli. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> where we start guessing. Uh. <laughs> so Samuel. We don't know all the scriptures, people. <laughs> no. So Samuel, in, in the Bible, he thought that um, his uh, instructor was calling him, yes. but really it yeah. was the voice of the Lord. Yeah. And so he was drawn, he was yeah. set apart since yeah. he was young, like you yeah. said, set yeah. apart. But you know, it's this ability to hear yeah. God's voice. Yeah. Now, as far as honing the gift and sharpening it, that's yeah. a whole other thing that I grew into. Yeah. But just coming from a young girl, I could see demons. Yeah. I could, I had dreams. Yeah. You know, and there is a responsibility because yeah. oftentimes people have gifts and they let them lay dormant and they don't wow. do anything with them, yeah. right? Just mm -hmm. like if you're an actor or what other type of sure. gift that it is, we yeah. have spiritual and yeah. natural gifts. That's but right. the word says that every good and perfect gift yeah. is from above. Oh my God, that's good. And so mm -hmm. a lot of people times because they don't understand it, yeah. they forsake it. That's right. And they're still going to have to give an account. Mm -hmm for that gift that they mm. lay dormant just because of lack yeah. of understanding, which the word also says my people yeah. perish for, for lack, lack of, of understanding. understanding. That's right, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if that really helps the viewers understand exactly no, what no, we're it, talking No, it about. does, because funny, funny pun, we were talking about CBN. I actually just watched what we're talking about here with Samuel oh. on, on Superbook. Okay. You know, on the show, there's a show, do you know the show Superbook? No. Oh my goodness. So Superbook takes the Bible and makes it relatable in a cartoon fashion. Okay. Right? And it's and they're literally from the T of the scripture. So what you're describing, they depicted that as young Samuel laying in the bed and he heard God's voice call out to him and he went to his instructor mm. and said, did you call me? And he's like, no, go back to sleep. You know, and then it had to happen multiple times. So just so that people know, if you struggle with uh, understanding the word of God, honestly, I watch this as an adult with my children. But there's sometimes I'm by myself binge watching this cartoon <laughs> because it's the word of God unfolding and right. it's so simple and practical. But I love what you're saying because, uh, so I'm a comedian, 
also actor. Yeah, I do this hosting and whatnot, you know, but I host, I do comedy, I do, you know, acting, whatever have you. But in that, there's a gift that God has given me. Mm -hmm. And I found that part of me kind of, because I started off in Hollywood. I started off with projects like Bloodline and American Crime Story, Johnny Versace and whatnot. And this is before I even began really walking with Christ. Mm -hmm. And then when I got into my walk with the Lord, I saw how he started to groom my gifting, almost as if he didn't want me, well, he didn't want me to really burst and explode in Hollywood. He wanted me to kind of take my journey with him. But I found that I started to fall in love with my gift, with my confidence, with what he's calling me to do. And I became more of an effective server for him when I was able to own my gifting. Mm -hmm. How many people are out there right now that are so scared to use their gifting in fear of what the world is gonna tell them? Right. You know, and when I see you, you take your prophetic gift and you know, often people say, well, I'm a prophet, right? People throw titles all the time. I'm a prophet, I'm an apostle, whatever the case is, right? So I love it because I, I follow you on your social media, right? We're social media friends, right? And on your title, you say prophetic voice and writer, okay? Now that's boldness. For someone to say like, oh yeah, prophetic word, you know, people are like, oh, coronavirus is gonna end in 2021, or <laughs> Christ is gonna come back in such and such day, whatever have you. But the things that you've published, or, uh, and that you've been recently published in Charisma Magazine, yes? Mm -hmm. It's so on point, because there's times that I will wake up, and God has already been ministering to me. Like recently, mm -hmm. there was one that I read with you about the eagle. And God was already ministering to me about these things going on in my own personal life, okay? I struggled with a situation where we were homeless, mm -hmm. and I was driving, uh, we had got an apartment, and then I'm driving to move things into the new apartment. I'm with a friend of mine in Christ, and we're driving along this road, and sure enough, the Lord has been ministering to me about Isaiah, about the word that it speaks in. You know, they'll show mount up on wings like eagles, right? You shout out, you know. So I'm driving, and sure enough, I saw what I thought was a toddler, right? I'm like, what is this toddler doing on the side of the road? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was like a two foot eagle. Wow. I've never seen an eagle in person that close, wow. you know, to my vehicle. Yeah. And as I'm driving past, the eagle takes off and spreads its wings, mm. right? And then I wake up one morning, right? I read the word that, that, you, that God gave to you, and it spoke to my spirit that it was on point, mm -hmm. that God is causing those who've been waiting upon him to just open the doors. They're going to soar on wings like eagles. And the object, what I read, and I, I recall reading, and, and I'm pretty sure you'll correct me, that it was more or less just flying above that storm, mm -hmm. using the storm right. to cause you to fly higher and at the time we were homeless we were going through some things mm. but i never retreat mm -hmm. from the lord i actually welcome the suffering because i believe that's how we know god's heart mm -hmm. so when god speaks to you that way how is it that you filter through what maybe someone else is saying what the world is saying and what jesus is telling you that's a really good question um number one not getting too much of the world's information. Correct. So I don't put that in my heart. Mm. The Bible says to hide His Word in your, his, your, your wow. heart so that you don't sin against Him. That's right. So I don't allow a lot of noise in. Mm. And I spend, not not to sound super spiritual because I'm not. Yeah, sure. um, and I know there's times where we're super busy, like mm. this week has been insanely busy for sure. me. Yeah. But I spend a lot of time with the Lord. Huh. And, and, but it's come through years of stewarding His voice. It started off simple obedience, kind of like Joyce Meyer, right? Yeah. She talks about you, you uh, leave your grocery cart, you know, mm -hmm. where it doesn't belong, and the Lord's like, go, go put that back. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. Obedience is always a small step. Wow, that's good. You steward the small things, yeah. He'll give you more. Yeah. Also, uh, through asking questions. Mm. I ask the Lord a lot of questions. I spend time with him on something, and, you know. As you grow and mature, <laughs> the riddles get a little harder. Sure. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah. It maybe takes a little bit longer. Yeah. But he he we likes talk it. Talk to Job about that one. When we linger with mm -hmm. him. You know, uh, we talked a lot about heart issues on our earlier episode. Mm -hmm. He's always after our heart. He always. loves to linger with mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. because we're we're his beloved bride. Ultimately, yeah. Yeah. is that relationship with him. Yeah. So at any type of the prophetic has to be pure and mm. so uh, there's a lot of fire that comes with it like if anyone really knew my real testimony yeah. uh, honestly yeah. you know we were really good at putting images up for people sure and yeah. 
but the real testimony is is sometimes people think you know especially if you grew up in the faith movement or different types of movement they think mm -hmm. oh if you go through this trial like you recently mm -hmm. being homeless mm -hmm. you must not have enough faith brother yeah. you know yeah. and that's not truth no you know the bible no. says that we'll have suffering we'll have oh, yeah. persecution oh yeah you know and well, like let's read the bible what does the bible actually sure, say about this sure. and so to to be tested like a daniel mm -hmm. and and like job mm -hmm. and i mean you name it joseph the yeah. stories go on and on yeah. and on the apostles almost all were mm -hmm. martyred yeah 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 and i and i got to i got to let you guys know something here i can talk to amy all day <laughs> because when you find someone who does walk with the lord very closely like if you hear what 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 you're saying it's a matter of like you spend a lot of time with him only because you're constantly listening to him, right? And we find that a lot of people don't listen to him. But I know that we can talk all day long. We're not gonna make this a two-hour documentary, <laughs> but but we will we will right you know. <laughs> but we will speak to um, so a Blaze Global Productions. Uh -huh. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that started? What is it doing now? And where's it headed? Sure. Um, so a Blaze Global Productions is. Initially, I started it off as my production company because I was working on a short film and I, I was producing it and I thought, well, now is as good as time as ever to create my own production company. This was a couple years ago. And so um, a Blaze Global uh, was my photography name and then prior to that, Mountains of Blaze has always been my email, like my very first email. So we've always had the word ablaze in there. Mm. Always loved the That's fire. That's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. You just gotta love the a fire. Blaze. I love the fire. Yeah, I love yeah, the fire. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Fire carrier. Mm -hmm. Well, within that, um, it's kind of developed uniquely in mm. this last year because mm. I've incorporated um, entertainment sort of slogans, if you will, or terminology that you would know sure. within the industry, sure. but incorporate it into ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it has kind of a twofold, and I really don't know what the Lord wants me to specifically produce for Him in this next hour, mm -hmm. except for, if you look up the word producing, it actually means to cause a yield. Mm -hmm. But you get a yield through yielding. Mm -hmm. So when you are a yielded vessel, like you cause a yield to come. Mm. So the the produce, people like people in Christian realm sometimes are like afraid, oh you don't want to get into that producer thing. You don't want to get that spirit on you. You don't want to produce. And I'm like, well actually, <laughs> if you yield to the Holy <coughs> Spirit, he will cause great fruit to yield from you. Mm. So there's all these plays on words. Mm. And that's the thing. Mm. We love to judge people, mm. but if you only knew the true story behind it. Mm -hmm. Now it is a ministry. It um has to do a lot with um, what I'm writing. So on my page, A Blaze mm -hmm. Global Productions, mm -hmm. I have all the prophetic words, not all, yeah. I'm, I have to backdate, but sure. I have recent prophetic sure, words sure. that I, I publish on there. Yeah. Um, also a section called Visual Encouragement where I mm -hmm. post some of our links from mm -hmm. um, the, the Christian View mm -hmm. and then other interviews that I've done, and, yeah. uh, maybe some short films. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I love it because I, I've read it you know, and, I, and I'm going to be constantly looking at it now, especially. And that's why I'm, I'm a big, I'm a firm believer on sharing what other people are doing. I love mm -hmm. to see people rise. And when I say people particularly, yeah, do I like to see all people rise? Sure, but um, particularly it's the people that's in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's why the goal is to get people from out of that world and show them how can they, they can rise too in Christ. You know, you speak, when I hear you speak and I, when I read what you write, you do talk a lot about, like the kingdom, you talk a lot about you know just the bride and and the return of Christ, and the way you speak about it, it's so passionate about how you feel about His return, and it it troubles me that our body that we are we exist in right now, the body of Christ, it seems as if there's not so much emphasis on the return of Christ, and He's coming, mm -hmm. you know, and you speak on that, and I and I love that about what the, your productions rep represent. But I know that we can't spend an ample amount of time on that, but how can people kind of get behind what a Blaze Global production is doing? How can they, can they get involved? How can they just be a part? Oh, well, yes, thank you. Um, thank you, that like brought tears to my eyes because honestly, um, life without intimacy with Christ is honestly meaningless. The whole purpose of our mm -hmm. being here is to intimately know Him. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, he's, he is coming back for a pure and spotless bride. Mm. And I do believe that there is a difference between the general body and the bride. I agree with you. And the bride is uh, uh, the church 
are who in the church have chosen to make herself ready to have oil in her lamp five and to virgins, purify herself. Five wise, five foolish. Yeah, and oh. so that's just uh, I just feel the anointing there. Mm -hmm. So, um, so my mission mm -hmm. actually has shifted some. I'm not focusing so much on entertainment as in being an actress. If that happens, it's great. Sure. But my shift. Sure. is a missionary back to the church sure. to prepare the church sure. for his return. Sure. And within that, I'm not forsaking entertainment, but that's sure. why my, my web page is still up there. Um, you can just, I have a follow button on there. You can, yeah. um, you'll get emails when I yeah. post um, from there. So that's how you can So I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from the Lord now, and uh, I, I want to take this time. A, a wise man, a good friend of mine, Cameron Arnett, uh, Love Cam. You know, yep, yep. Cam, Cam's a good guy, and I was uh, I was interviewing Cameron on our show on the Hands and Feet of Jesus, and um, we started the show, and he starts telling me he's like, "Dude, you're you're all over. You're doing whatever." And I'm like, "Me? I didn't do anything." I'm like, "I've been watching you," and and he's like, "But but can I talk about you? You know?" And I'm like, "Cause I'm not gonna talk about myself." And he was like, "But I can talk about you." Yeah. And then he just spoke into me that way. Um, and I want to do the, take the moment to do that for you because one thing that you don't know, and this is gonna, this is candid, one thing that you don't know about me is that I've watched you. I'm a people watcher and I discern in the spirit and I was watching you and I just recently, like I said, came to know you and saw your face and then we like to get, to get to do Christian View together, right? And I'm a supporter of yours. But what I've seen is you have helped me tremendously with my walk and my voice that God is using through me um, and where I am with still with the acting and comedy and ministry and whatever have you. So what I want to tell you is that it's that obedience has affected me greatly. Mm. And I'm a man that walks very closely to Christ because I was uh, operating that pharisaical spirit mm. um, for most of my life, you know, because of the cult that I got uh, pulled into. So when I see you bold speaking that, what I love to say to you right now is that the voice that he's giving you it is for right now. Because other people who hear from God need to stop muffling his voice and give yourself over fully to him. Yes. Because you said something very profound there, right? We talked about the Hollywood acting. We talked about what you've done, you know, um, in regards to all that. But you just said something that's like, like if he does that, he does that, right? Oh. But the goal is to, I just want, I want to know that his father's heart more mm -hmm. and prepare uh, for the coming of, of, of our groom, mm -hmm. right? For the taking of the bride. And I love that so much because when I told God, I said, Father, take the acting from me, take the comedy, you know, mm -hmm. back when I started in ICFF 2018, because, uh, you know, the acting on Hollywood, I saw a little glimpse of it. And I don't think it was anything compared to what, what you might have done. But I was, a, I was a glimpse. I was on set, million dollar projects. You saw the whole thing. It's Hollywood, right? A-listers and whatever have you. Right. But he showed me a glimpse and then he took it from me. And then he gave me faith-based acting. And then I realized I didn't want any of it. I just wanted him. You know, I just wanted him to know his heart. So to hear you say that, it's so good right now. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to continue spending that time with him. Because I know sometimes we put a word out there and we don't know what it's going to do. We're like, okay, God, I'm going to post it. I'm going to put it out there. You, I don't know. You know, sometimes you want to come and see it and who's reading it or who's commenting or whatever have you. But it's affecting because even if it affects one, and I'm going to tell, tell you right now, I'm the one that was affected by that word. So I say you keep going and you keep doing what God is calling you to do because I took a little bit of that from you. And I recently gave a word to a sister in Christ of mine. And, uh, you know, I kind of gave it. We were in conversation. We are having a meeting. And the Lord just told me that she was a single sister in Christ. Um, and there's a lot of single women out there who are in Christ who are hurting mm -hmm. because they feel as if, like, I don't have no covering. I don't know. But yeah. I encouraged her that Jesus is your covering. Yeah. And I gave her a word that she said was spot on. And then and I did something that I never did before. I took that word that I gave her, that the Lord allowed me to give her. And then I saw something else. I was watching another sister of Christ who, who, who we know uh, well that um, I just saw what she was posting. You know, you can see what's going on with a lot of people's lives and what they post and whatever have you. So I don't think we should just scroll and keep scrolling, right? What I do is I look, I pray, I discern, and maybe God wants me to give them a word. Well, I took the word that I gave to the other sister and I gave it to the one sister who was single and she's very outspoken about, um, you, know, uh, you know, purity and whatever have you. So I went ahead and shared it. And I said, hey, I'm just being obedient. And I said to her, and she said, this is so spot on for right now. Mm. And I want to say that you had a lot to do with that. 
because I want, I read your word. I see I see what, what God is doing through you, and you've encouraged me Aww. with that. You know, wow. so I, I'm just I'm, I'm great. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm uh, it all I'm, goes back to him. Yeah, it, right? it all goes back to him. So I'm I'm grateful to have you here. Um, maybe at some point we can have you back because I think there's just so much more to talk about. But we thank you. But if you could tell our viewers, leave them with one one note. What is it that you'll tell? You could look right into that camera. Sure. One note, hmm, one shot, yeah, one shot with you. Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for having yeah, me. It's yeah, been an honor. Yeah, yeah and thank you for that yeah, encouragement. Yeah, praise the Lord. Um, but yeah, you know, just really seek after the Lord with your whole entire heart. Um, you know, the Lord says that those who, who seek him will find him. That verse in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. <clears throat> but then what it goes on to say is that those who seek with him with their whole entire heart mm -hmm. will be found by him. Mm -hmm. So there's an act of, yes, the Lord has good plans for you, yeah. but there's an activation that comes. Mm -hmm when you seek him with your whole entire heart. Mm -hmm. So I believe that that is what the Lord is after in this yeah. hour and for the empowerment mm -hmm. that he has for us as believers, for the church and for the body to take on you know, our full identity in him and our purpose, but that comes through fully surrendering our hearts. To yeah, him. that's good, that's good. And guys, it goes back to the show that we did earlier. It's all about the heart, right? God is after your heart, he wants your heart. And in order for me to be the hands and feet of Jesus, I could not have done that without having my heart posture towards the Father. So I thank you so very much for joining us today. we got to have you back on. Thank Hope you. to speak some more soon. But we're going to continue supporting you, continue sharing your thank content you. because God is really speaking through you. So God bless you and thank you so much. Thank so guys, you. thank you so much for having us. And uh, God bless you and have a good one.